Well, thanks for joining in. I am doing a video today on the shadow aspects of online tarot. Yes, um, it's a video I've actually wanted to do for a very long time. Haven't had a release to do it, but finally, you know, got a wild hair. Like, I'm going to put it out there. I'm just going to do it. Um, so we're going to talk about deception. Yes, we are going to talk about, you know, tarot being used as a coping mechanism rather than a resolving mechanism. And we're going to talk about money matters because it really does matter. It really, really does. So I hope you stay tuned for this. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, and if you stay tuned to the very end, I'm going to give you some tips on how to, you know, avoid the red flags of readers who are maybe reading out of a shadow energy, for lack of better wording. All right, and I gotta give y'all fair warning before I get into this. I'm probably, you know, if you're a tarot reader on YouTube, sorry, I just might call you out on your stuff. <laughs> but you know, let's do better, shall we? All of us included, myself included. And some of these things that I'm gonna bring to your attention, you know, I learned through trial and error. I tried some of these things out. I'm like, yeah, that works, but should I be working that? Mm, I don't know, okay, like, right. I'm not really judging you, but let's say it is what it is, okay? So <laughs> if you feel judged, I'm sorry, not sorry, I don't know. Okay, here, let's get into it. Deception. Well, I mean, let's be real. There's a lot of viewers who want it, okay? Um, because there's a lot of spiritual bypassing that people do in the New Age community. Even as a Christian, I saw it as a Christian, it's just a human behavior that people do, spiritual bypassing, it's a way to escape. If I can over-spiritualize everything, you know, like maybe that there's some divine reason why I'm staying in the toxic relationship or that I'm, I'm obsessing over this toxic person, you know, if I can over-spiritualize that, then, you know, maybe I can justify bad behavior or not deal with bad behavior. Um, it's a way of not tuning out, not dealing with reality. And at best, it's, pacifying or placating um, behavior, but it's really feeding a fantasy. You know, a lot of times there are people um, who they, when they click on certain video titles, what they're doing is they're clicking on a video that is going to affirm a particular narrative or fantasy that they want to feed, that they want to feel or experience. And the sad part of it is that, unfortunately, the algorithm on YouTube kind of encourages that kind of stuff because, you know, the algorithm promotes the channels who get the extra click clicks. So if I can feed, you know, your your little fantasy and, and put it in the title, like clickbaity title, then damn, I'm going to get a lot of views. YouTube's going to promote it. And um is good for money maybe, but not really good for edifying people on a spiritual level. So it creates an atmosphere where readers are encouraged to lie. They're encouraged to spiritually eavesdrop, gossip, trash talk versus telling the unapologetic truth and transcending it. You know, maybe giving some advice on how to do that. And you know you're hearing it when you hear he's coming back. They're sorry. They regret it. They feel just so lost without you. They can't stop thinking about you. They're your twin flame. They're so in love with you. And you know everything's about love, right? <laughs> I mean, I watch some of these videos and over and over again, it's this person's in love with you. And I'm like, no, they're not. I'm an empath. I know this person's not in love with me. My intuition's telling me. My cards are telling me. They're telling me. They're not in love with me. And then you go on these channels and it'll start playing tricks in your head because the one right after another is telling you oh this person's in love with you and um, the reality is that human behavior you know most people they do what they do because they feel right within themselves they feel either that they're right or that they're justified in doing something wrong Okay, like, well, I know I'm cheating and that's not right, but I feel justified because fill in the blank. He's not giving you sex. He was, he cheated himself. I mean, you fill in the blank and this is human behavior. So, and I find often as well, again, with human behavior, a lot of times when people get into regret, usually the regret is about the consequences of their bad choices. Like they don't really regret their choice. They regret that there are consequences to their choices that were bad. So 
The other issue is, again, it's a human behavior thing. People love to be lied to. They hate the truth. So you wrap all of that together, you know, all things considered, and you realize that there is a monetary incentive for people, for readers, to put out these sweet little lies and tell you what you want to hear, that this person is sorry, they're coming back, they love you, it feeds the fantasy, you get the clicks, you get the AdSense revenue. Um, so yeah, and even for those of us who don't, we try to be above all of that because we've got a conscience. Well, sadly, um, the pressure is there and sadly, manipulation works. And so the people who are viewing these videos who are not really aware of what's going on and how money is driving certain narratives to be recycled ad nauseum, um, they're going to get sucked into it and they're going to not realize that all of these seemingly affirming or confirming messages are coming from the shadow energies. Uh, you know, and on the manipulation, I mean, sometimes I see it outright boldly, blatantly in the titles where you see these, these clickbaity titles like, you're not going to believe this. If you see this video, it is meant for you. Oh my God, you just have to watch this now. And you see the overuse of superlatives, you know, words like surprise, warning, shocking, secret. And I'm telling you, it's time tested over and over again. I've used these methods, right? Like if I had a video that was not performing well and all my other ones were, and I'm looking at why am I not getting clicks on this? I go in, change the title, throw a superlative in there about a secret coming out or a secret admirer. Click, 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 click. I hate it. I hate it because this is human behavior and this is how people get manipulated. And people who do this for a business, they find out very quickly how to manipulate to get the clicks, to get the revenue, to keep their business afloat. It's really very unhealthy when you're doing spiritual work. So I'm going to say this is a true story. Um, if I wanted more views and subscribers on my channel, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, I would rename this channel the Cupcakes, Unicorns, and Rainbows channel. <laughs> and I'd like my ass off every day, all day long, doing live readings. All my titles would be sensational, clickbaity. And I would tell your all your little inner demons everything that they want to hear, every little lie that they want to hear to avoid doing any kind of spiritual growth whatsoever, to keep them coming back to me with more problems that never go away, that I never help you solve. And I get filthy rich off of it. Selling products and services beyond this channel, but you know, I don't do it because I have a conscience. So here we are. All right, let's talk about complacency and coping versus resolving. Um, we have a lot of viewers on YouTube who, you know, like everybody out, a lot of people out in the world, um, they're dealing with a loneliness epidemic. And I really believe that this is why tarot is so popular. It's become so popular in the last uh, few years. Um, online tarot basically gives people the benefit of having a virtual friend without the cost of having an actual friend. And so a lot of people, they just want to feel like they have a friend, somebody to talk to, somebody who understands them. Maybe, yeah, without risking or sacrificing anything to have a real relationship that actually requires reciprocation. This is kind of a one-way relationship dynamic, right? It's very safe. Um, it is low investment, low, no maintenance, right? Uh, where it's highly self-focused on one person, the viewer. There's a saying that everybody's favorite subject is themselves, and that's what tarot does. Matter of fact, anytime I have tried to relate some of the readings back to myself, there's usually at least one person in the audience who will comment down below and say, I'm not here to listen to you. Even if it's like uh, relevant to whatever came up in the tarot reading and I'm trying to relate in a way that is helpful, um, you will get some people who will outright tell you like, I don't even want to hear what you have to say. Like, I'm here to hear about me, not you. <laughs> 
they'll just, I know other, you know, there are people out there who do like that level of sharing, um, again, because they're wanting to feel like they have a friend, but there are other people who are like, no, it's going to be all about me. So, um, definitely there is arguably a narcissistic, uh, nature to these readings or, you know, that it feeds into with people. And so sometimes people are using tarot readings as a substitute for relational work. This is not just in, in actually making a real friend offline, okay? But let's say they do have their real relationships offline rather than going and talking to that person and working that out face to face, they're resorting to talking to the video or listening to the video, okay? And granted, there's a time and space for that where like you get more understanding, you get more insight. But if they use the reading to bypass conversations, not exactly help in relationships. It's a way to kind of maybe avoid meaningful conversations um, with real, real people in real life. So sometimes I think for some people, they can feel like they are having um, a relationship without actually having one. And it's a way for somebody to maybe have access to their intimate thoughts without having to build intimacy with another person and trust. So. Another problem with this is that it can reinforce isolation and bond people to relating to devices rather than actual people. And again, this kind of adds pressure to readers to, you know, turn everything into some kind of a love story. And some of I've actually seen some readers on YouTube um, shockingly who I was like really impressed with and I start reading you know their about page and you know what's their background and then they'll outright say in the description box or the about page again if you listen closely they will tell you outright these are just stories they'll say you know I I'm not psychic I'm not intuitive I'm not empathic I'm just telling you stories here and I'm like whoa <laughs> are you serious yeah yeah because people people like eat it up story time, fantasy land, net tuning out, spiritual bypassing. And, and, and I'm going to go back to like the point on turning everything into a love story, um, because that is probably the most popular, you know, anytime I try to put out like money readings or healing reading, like who wants to heal, you know, and, and other people are like, yeah, my job, who cares, you know? Um, but they want, I got to play with my cat, sorry. <laughs> they want uh, to hear about love. And the problem is that astrologically speaking, um, the energy is not always supporting you to focus, focus, focus on your love life. Sometimes the energy is supporting you, you know, doing 12th house, 8th house uh, spiritual healing work or, you know, working on 6th house, 10th house, vocational, professional um, career type work, you know. Um, your money, your coins, second, eighth house, you know, not everything is about love 24 seven, but um, you've got a lot of people who are like, that's their whole fixation. By the way, I'm going to talk more about that. Probably in a video series, I will get out next week on attachment styles where you have some people who always have to be in a relationship. They're very insecure if they're not in some kind of partnership or relationship or they've got, the, they, they're not obsessing and focusing and fixating on a relationship. Uh, very unhealthy attachment style. And those kind of people get drawn into these readings where they need to constantly have their focus on these relationships. When sometimes spirit is like, no, we want you to focus on your money. We want you to focus on your spiritual growth and healing. And if you come across these readers who just refuse to get off script, right? Like if I'm doing a reading that maybe I want to make it into a love reading, but hot damn, all the cards are telling me this is pentacles. This is about money and values. You know, um, what does that reader do in that situation? Are they willing to go off script if spirit leads them that way? If the cards open it up in that direction? My advice to you on this is learn to read the cards for yourself. At least have some basic knowledge of the cards so that if a reader is uh, going off script, right? They're, they're, they've got all these cards saying pentacles, but they're not reading it as values, money, whatever. They're putting everything in the context of love, love, love. Well, you know it you know it okay um right or like one reader got the tower card and said it was an ejaculation come on now that is a reach but again if you can't if you don't know what that tower card means <laughs> you gotta get duped you gotta get duped so yeah um 
And I also want to say on the personal relationships note, if you see something in a tarot reading online and you actually start thinking there's some merit to it, um, go talk to your person about it. Try, use it as a, a conversation starter. Open up a dialogue with that person to get them to clarify what is this? Um, what is this between the two of us? What does this mean? And use, use it as a conversation starter. All right, so on to money matters um, because it really does matter. <laughs> and, you know, I kind of already hit on it a little bit leading up to this, but I want to say that, yes, occasionally, um, if you if you have a tarot reading channel, you are going to encounter viewers who um, they want free private readings. I, I kid you not. They will email you and they will ask you for free private readings. And I've talked to other tarot readers on here thinking, is it just me? Is it something that I'm putting out there? No, it's just, p again, human nature. A lot of people want something for nothing and, and, and trying to understand where is this coming from? Why do people do this? Um, I think the issue is, and you got to be ready for it. Like, especially if you have an online business, okay. Um, people will see your spiritual business as charity. And a lot of times people see themselves as less than, and that's, if you get these kind of emails, they'll be like, oh, I'm really on hard times. I'd like to pay you, but I can't. Um, I'm in a devastating situation. Can you help me? And heck, they don't know, like maybe you're in a devastating situation, <laughs> you know, but you're just not telling everybody because you're trying to keep it professional, you know, and you don't want to seem needy and desperate yourself. So, you know, you've got your hustle on, but they think that because you have a business, that means that you're in a better position than them. Um, not necessarily so. Some people are doing this business because um, nothing else is working out for them. And they've been basically pushed into a corner and it's sink or swim. And they can't just do free readings. They're not going to be able to pay their bills, you know. And so um, this is the kind of stuff you run up against. Um, I would say generally the audience, at least for me, has been pro primarily women. Women seem to be more open to this. There are men, unfortunately. And I have had some really good male clients, all right. But unfortunately of the the type of people that come in to ask for free readings or or they just want to talk and they never buy anything from you but they want your attention and they want you to listen to them but they never ever pay you um tend to be men i'm very sorry to say that and maybe it's different you know if you're a reader and that you have a different experience i would love to hear in the comments down below but um now, uh, there, there's another kind of thing that you get when you're dealing with some of these people is very demanding energy where they, again, I think it's because of the times that we're in, you know, people, they, they want service on demand. It's, it's like, you know, it's a factory in China that I'm, I'm just putting out all these you know, readings, not understanding that, hey, this is energy and it's spirit led. And, you know, sometimes I'm a human being. Sometimes my energy ain't right and I need to get it right <laughs> before I get into my readings. Like, and you try to explain. And again, there's a balance as a business person of me delivering something in a timely manner and as agreed upon. Right. And, I, and I'm very conscious of that. OK, but at the same time. Um, if you have a lot of things going on in your life, right? Like last year, my dog passed away. It's very hard. Uh, matter of fact, I knew, I knew he was going to be passing. So I hurried up and put a reading out and I told this person, I'm just giving this early because if I do it on the day it's due, I'm going to be devastated. I will not be any, in any mental condition to do this reading. So I'm doing it early so that I'm not late. But again, it's like, sometimes we don't have control over that stuff and people, they lose it's like just a product like you're they treat you like you know you need to crank it out like you're on a factory line in china um and i do want to warn you on, on the user end of it like if you see readers who are cranking it out like that beware because usually with higher quantity the quality takes a hit pick your poison okay i i'm going to be a quality over quantity person all day long right that's my taurus rising also, you know, donations, rare, okay? Rare, rare. Um, even at the height of my channel, when it was like the most successful, the most active and growing and thriving, I would get maybe one or two donations um, every six months. And those donations would be maybe like 20 bucks, okay? 
Um, the last time I had a donation was maybe a year or two ago. That's how long it's been. I can't even tell you. <laughs> um, you deal with a lot of almost vampire type of energies. Um, I, I hate to say gimme jimmies. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but let's keep it real. You know, and even the people who do give, um, I, when you do the reading, it's like there's there's got to be some respect for the work because we empaths are taking on energies. I mean, sometimes I've had readings come in where people are going through high crisis, highly toxic situations, relationships, you know, major transitory times in their life, highly chaotic. And I'm picking all of this up in the reading. And I, yeah, occasionally, not always, but occasionally I'm overcome by emotion. I can feel the pain. I've even teared up and started crying in some of my readings because I can feel what they're going through. Or, you know, I start pulling and I see there's they're in an abusive, like very abusive, toxic relationship. And I can start feeling that stuff all around me. And I gotta clear, I gotta clear my own space after I get done. I gotta clear my my home, my energy. It's not always like that, okay? But it does happen like that. And the readers who do channeling, okay, that's something I don't do, but my gosh, those are the ones that are taking on the biggest, in my opinion, spiritual danger because they're opening spiritual doors. And usually those readers, uh, I they, they end up getting out of it within, I'd say, about a year. And they can't do it anymore because they're opening themselves up to too much of the spirit realm. And I'm talking really dark, demonic type. I, I do not do that kind of, no, I don't do it. Right, I'm not a medium, okay? I'm not allowing entities to come into me or <laughs> hell knows not doing it that's where i draw the line on my work okay but yeah going back to the money aspect because i went off on a little bit the dark energies that people write like value for what we're doing okay because we are opening ourselves up to things that should be valued okay but um back to the money aspect people I think people are more clear now than they were before, but in a year, years prior, a lot of people thought, oh, you got a YouTube channel, it's monetized, you have all these subscribers, you're making great money. No, let me tell you, earning uh, less than a cent per view. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I quit even looking at AdSense revenue probably about a year, year or two ago. I just, I mentally, the only way I could cope with it is I just told myself just don't even expect it. If it comes in, great. If it doesn't, it's just another day. Like, I don't, I just shut it off. And, you know, again, some of you, you know, you, when you are tipping these uh, tarot readers on Super Chat when they go live, um, yeah, they get boosted views for going live. Um, but when you tip on Super Chat, YouTube, last I checked, keeps 30% of those dollars. And um, then they are only going to pay you once every 30 days. And that is if your earnings, your AdSense earnings, exceed a hundred dollars so if if you don't if you didn't earn more than a hundred dollars then they'll just hold on to that money until you get to a hundred okay so let me give you an example if you give somebody a five dollar tip on super chat they're only going to see like three dollars and fifty cents and it could be up to 30 days maybe even longer than that like i said if, if they don't have more than a hundred dollars and yeah I'll possibly never see that money like if you just totally if you never earn over a hundred and you quit the channel, you'll never see the money. They'll never pay it out to you. So, right for me, when I figured all this out, I just asked people. Uh, you know, I told them I'd give them a discount if they would um, on the live readings, and they were tipping me. I'd say, well, if you can pay on Super Chat if you want, but I'll give you more for less money if you tip on PayPal or Cash App or whatever. You know. The reality of being a YouTuber is, especially right now, there's oversaturation, even on TikTok, um, it, it's worse, okay? And um, if you're starting a new channel, the first two years probably going to be great because the algorithm will bo boost you and help support you get more reach, and that's good, but even then, you're still going to deal with um, a lot more compliments than compensation, and so you need to be prepared for that. And you have to understand as well that YouTube really controls who v views you through that algorithm that can and will change at their will. You have no control. It's up to their whim, you know, um, how they're going to promote your channel or not. 
And so um, beware if you're in your first two years of a channel, you could be really falsely optimistic um, because YouTube is boosting those views and making you think, wow, I've like got this ma massive audience and I'm getting all this reach. Um, but, you know, I've come to question post those two years, were those subscribers real? I don't know. Um, there's really no transparency at all. And um, I've even seen really even bigger channels are mysteriously using uh, losing subscribers after that two year mark. It's almost like they start losing their, and it's kind of weird, but and because there's no actual transparency, like some kind of third party regulatory agency verifying that these accounts are real and legit and that you're not being like given some false optimism that you're growing when you're not. Um, it, it's really shaky. Okay. In hindsight, I, I see that I see it that way. And I realized as I was coming out of my two years, uh, my first two years that, you know, building a business solely on this platform is a very weak, um, bad business model. Okay. Because, you know, you're, you are rewarded with views and subscribers, but that encourages burnout, visible burnout, right? Like the people who produce more videos, they get more views, more reach, you know, and all of this, um, but they look dead. They look like zombies, you know, and those of us who try to diversify, which is what I did when I realized I don't want to put all my eggs in this basket. Like I don't have control over what goes on at YouTube. I want to get more control. So I built on other platforms like Vimeo, Etsy, well, then we risk um, losing viewers who are already sick of all the sales ads, right? Like by the time you try to tell them, come over and buy my extended video on Vimeo or come buy my Sage Spray on Etsy. Well, they've already listened to how many videos, um, they've already listened to how many ads on YouTube trying to sell them and they're, they're sick of it. They're absolutely sick of it. And a lot of people getting them to leave YouTube and go to another platform is actually not easy. The reality of online business, I've said this before, I'll say it again, is that there's maybe like a one to 2% conversion sales. In other words, if I've got to reach a hundred people to get one or two sales. So even though I'm a quality over quantity person all day long, what gets conversion, what pays my bills is quantity. And that means that I have to put out low quality stuff. And that's why you see the channels out here who put out the lowest quality are getting the highest views, the, the far, farthest reach, furthest reach, okay? And the other thing is like you have to just psychologically, it's been shown that with sales and marketing, generally you have to tell somebody like seven times, they've got to hear about like a sale seven times before they actually convert and, you know, buy and take advantage of that sale. So again, there's rewarding mechanisms kind of built in with human psychology, with this platform and the way it works, where you have to keep hammering it out, low quality, high quantity, like you're, you know, working in a factory in China, <laughs> um, continually ad nauseum, feeding the fantasy, selling, 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 selling. Come watch my video at Vimeo. Come over at the extended, extended, extended. Buy myself an Etsy, buy myself an Etsy. Look at this, look at that. Da, 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 da. And it's it's sad. Like, I don't want to do it. I actually, I want to help people, okay? But unfortunately, that kind of mentality of wanting to help people doesn't pay bills really well. I hate to admit it, but it's the truth. And the thing is, if you can't make it work in this line of work, you know, this being a light worker, being a spiritual worker, um, if that doesn't work out for you, then you got to deal with a stigma, of uh, trying to find another job or start another business because the reality is people who do this type of work there is a stigma attached to it there's a lot of people who think that's weird it's out to lunch it's fringe it's just not solid it's it's hooey dewey hokey pokey spooky spiritual you know airy fairy <laughs> um so not easy work all right, for those of you who made it to the end, thank you. I am going to share with you some advice on how to recognize red flags in readings and from readers, okay? So you can hopefully avoid that. Kind of said it before, you know, try to avoid these recycle narratives. It's always the same damn story, right? They're wrong, you're right, 
yeah, but you're gonna win. You're gonna get your way. All the spiritual work is on them, and you know God is just gonna automatically fix it for you and deliver you out of this effortlessly. Your lucky break is coming. There's nothing you have to do. Um, <laughs> and you know if you keep seeing a reader who's got the same script where it's you're good, they're bad, and everything's gonna be okay. You know it's you know or they love you, they're coming back, but they never do. I mean, come on now. It's always this you know, happy ending, right? Uh, Hollywood type Disney stuff going on. Well, you know, notice that, take note of that. And, you know, also pay attention to these readers who are unwilling to get off script, especially when the cards say so. When they, when the cards are saying, this ain't a love reading, are you willing to not make it a love reading? Because yeah, sometimes spirit needs and wants the viewer to focus on their finances, um, because their finances are affecting their love life or their career is affecting their love life. And Spirit is like, yeah, well, you know, before you go over here, we need to fix this thing over here, all right? Which maybe is highly inconvenient. Not what you want to hear. But again, what are you here for? Are you here to be lied to? Are you here to Neptune out? Or are you here to get in alignment with your spiritual path? Knowing what those cards mean is going to help you to realize that this is a reader who is just making up stories or and calling it in their intuition uh, and I'm all about the intuition okay let me just say that as a side note as a reader though my attitude is first and foremost you read that card okay? blame it on my Aquarius stellium okay you tell the truth logically what the heck does that card mean and then if, if on an intuitive level, you hear something, you feel something, you see something, you, you then speak about that and you own that as this is what I'm getting intuitively, but this is what the card means. And then you let the viewer decide for themselves how they receive that message and how that message applies to themselves. But these people who are pulling cards out, making up stories that don't even have anything at all to do with the cards and they're calling it intuition, I don't know. Well, if it resonates, it resonates, okay? But I'm just saying... Be careful with that. Another red flag is when the readers do not offer any kind of um, spiritual guidance. They have no basic understanding of human nature, psychology, relational skills. I mean, if all you're doing is talking the problem, you're, you're never going to get it solved, right? You're going to have to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, right? By the way, that's part of the reason why I have all these life coaching resources on my website. So that when I'm doing readings, I can, and something does come up, and you want to learn more about that, how to improve your relationship, improve your relational skills, get into more self-empowerment. I've got the resources and the tools here on this channel to do that. I don't want you to be stuck. I think the, the best readers are the ones who are imparting wisdom. They're imparting some meaningful advice on self-empowerment, regardless of other people's behavior. Right, not encouraging this passive, what other people, you know, a constant focus on what other people are doing and how you, you sitting around waiting for them to be sorry and come back and then twiddling your fingers because they never do. And then you're like, well, now what? Okay. Um, I think that it's important that you listen to readers who are in some way trying to edify you um, spiritually through offering support on shadow work. And, you know, obviously also avoiding the clickbait, okay? I mentioned that earlier, the sensational titles, clickbaity stuff. Like, again, maybe it's the truth, you know? Maybe you are going through something quite sensational right now, and that title really does resonate. But don't constantly get sucked into that stuff because that's how you're getting manipulated. And finally, I'm going to say, you know, people who are selling like spells, all right? This one, another thing I don't do along with the mediumship. Um, selling spells to me is witchcraft, uh, witchcraft. And again, you know, blame this on my Christian background, but, um, from a Christian perspective, witchcraft is a spirit of manipulation and control, right? So if I'm trying to cast a spell and make somebody fall in love with me, no, no, we, you know, that, that's not the highest vibrational thing to do. We want to respect and honor and allow people's free will. And that's something that I am trying, right? And yeah, sometimes that hurts because people, honestly, they don't love you, all right? 
and and that hurts all right but we need to like you wouldn't want somebody to, to to force you to care about them or love them or whatever you want real love in order for it to be authentic is going to come from a place of allowing and receiving not force if it has to be forced it's not real okay and so anyway i just don't get into that um people who are selling spells and this doing this type of manipulation control witchcraft i i, I just don't get into it this is like again personal thing where i draw the line and i recommend you draw the line similarly because to me it's a red flag anyone who is trying to control other people's behavior rather than respect and honor free will and learn how to get more empowerment within self regardless of what other people are doing well that's it i want to know what you think i want to hear your advice on finding a good tarot reader and avoiding the you know the ones that are maybe operating out of more of a shadow side, okay, are offering these very shadowy type of tarot readings. Um, time and a place for everything. Um, you know, getting into like shadow work, uh, I guess, it, it is not a bad thing at all. Um, but if you're dealing with a reader who hasn't even done their own shadow work on themselves, that kind of spills over. Have y'all experienced that? I would love to hear. Um, your experiences in the comments down below and your advice. And until next time, be blessed.